control of emissions from your automobile is a matter of concern to you, to our fellow citizens, to Chrysler Corporation. And perhaps most of all to this gentleman. He is Mr. Charles Heinen, Director of Vehicle Emissions Planning for the Chrysler Corporation. Let him tell you the story of our progress thus far. Are we getting anywhere with our air pollution controls? The answer has to be yes. Just about every authority agrees with that statement. This includes the Los Angeles Air Pollution Control District, California Air Resources Board, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency, the Academy of Sciences, and even the President of the United States. We peaked at about 1968, and since then, all three of the pollutants have improved as more of the new vehicles with pollution control came into the total automotive population. For its 1975 products, Chrysler is installing on most models a new device that gives the car better gas mileage, easier starting, and smoother running, while also improving the control of emissions. Here's Mr. Heinen to tell you about it. This is a device you've probably heard a lot about lately, and you're undoubtedly going to hear a great deal more about it. It's called a catalytic converter. And in order to meet the federal regulations limiting exhaust emissions for our cars in 1975, we are going to equip most of them with this device. Now I'd like to tell you some things you should know about it. Let's start with how it works. The converter itself appears a little like a muffler. It is inserted in the exhaust system between the exhaust manifold and the actual muffler and tailpipe assembly. It has a single piece core extruded from a purified clay-like material. This is followed by the highly porous ceramic application, which we previously called a wash coat. The platinum and palladium are then applied to the core by dipping it in a bath containing the metals and then baking it. Then it's wrapped in a mesh of stainless steel wire to protect it from heat and shock. And finally, the whole thing goes inside a stainless steel shell, which is electron beam welded together to form a sturdy housing. Even the exhaust pipe ahead of the converter is stainless steel, so that no rust can form, which might clog the catalyst. The presence of these precious metals encourages further burning of the very small amounts of carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons that were not burned in the engine by the previous systems we have put on the engines. Without the catalyst, temperatures eight to 900 degrees higher would be required to bring about these extra reactions. Now the unwanted materials literally burn up in this catalyst area. And what is left is mostly harmless carbon dioxide and water. And that's what goes out through the regular exhaust system into the atmosphere. Now, there's nothing really strange or mysterious about the device. There have been a lot of conflicting statements and opinions about it. So therefore, let's see if we can put them in perspective. First, and this is most important, it does work. The converter does not affect the operation of the car adversely. In fact, fuel economy may even show a slight increase in catalyst-equipped cars over comparable 1974 models. We all want clean air, and Chrysler Corporation has long been a leader in helping to take the automobile out of the air pollution problem. We intend to continue that leadership. We hope that the federal government will be able to review its very stringent present and particularly future standards and will modify them so as to make them more consistent with actual atmospheric needs. But while they are in effect, we will continue to do our best to meet or to exceed them with the kind of engineering that produced this catalytic converter. <laughs> 